code 16, we're taking the area bounded between these curves and rotating about the line x is equal to negative 1. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn these curves. Um, and when we rotate it about the line x is equal to negative 1, what is going to happen is we're going to have these um, this height here. And we rotate it. And this rotation makes a cylinder, right? And we think about the cylinder here as an let me put this arrow, as an infinitely thin sheet of paper that gets wrapped around the line x is equal to negative 1. Um, now this sheet, it has an area, and it does have an area as a function of x because this area definitely changes as we go along the x-axis. So for example, um, if I were further on my x-axis, we can see here that the height of the cylinder um, would be bigger and so would the base, right? So it would go something like this. Um, so when we're, we're summing up these cylinders, it's going to give us a volume and the area of each of these sections changes as we go along the x-axis. Um, now I'm just going to remove this so it doesn't get too crowded. Um, and as we can see here, uh, the volume is going to be, so the volume is going to be the sum, and we're summing these up horizontally. So we're summing them up um, from 0 all the way out to 1. So from 0 to 1 of all these areas of these cylinders, right? So ax dx. So when we sum up all these areas, we are going to get a volume. Um, so the thing that we have to do is we have to express this area as a function of x, because then we're summing them up. Um, so the first thing that we're looking at is, um, so this area here is given by base times height, right? And um, my base is just going to be the base of my cylinder, which is a circle. So this base, um, any circle, the circumference is given by 2 pi r. And basically what we have to do here is express this radius in terms of x. Um, so this is 2 pi. And now let's just find the radius. Well, the radius is, um, I have to go from negative 1 to 0. So I have to to walk a distance of 1, and then plus wherever I'm at on my x-axis, right? So if, say, I'm at x is equal to 1 half here, it's going to be 1 plus 1 half. If I'm way further here, maybe at 0 0.9, it's going to be 1 plus 0 0.9. So my radius is going to be 1 plus wherever I'm at on my x-axis. And my height um, so the height here, it just goes from 0 to wherever it touches that orange curve, right? Um, this one's pretty easy. It's just the value of the orange curve. So if I went further, um, that height would be bigger because the orange curve gets bigger. And so this is just root x. And therefore, I have that my area, oops, my area is base times height. So the base is 2 pi times 1 plus x times height, which is x to the 1 half root x, right? And so I'm just going to distribute this so I can integrate it easier. Um, so that gives it x to the 1 half, and then x times x to the 1 half gives me x to the 3 halves. Um, and so now that I have an expression for my area, I can integrate it. Therefore, uh, my volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 1, because we're summing up these um, cylinders from 0 to 1, where my area is bounded, of 2 pi times x to the 1 half plus x to the 3 halves, because that's my expression for the area. Um, and now all I need to do is to integrate it, so that's 2 pi times um, x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds plus x to the 5 halves times 2 fifths, um, evaluated from 0 to 1. And now I don't need to worry about the lower boundary, because it's just going to go to 0. So all I have to do is evaluate the upper boundary. So that's 2 pi times, uh, if we plug in 1 for x, that gives us 2 thirds um, plus 2 fifths. So I'm going to put this in my calculator. And my volume is going to be 32 pi over 15. And yeah, that is what I get when I um, revolve this area about the line x is equal to negative 1. So all I'm doing is um, summing up these areas, right, which are the areas of my cylinder, which wrap around it, whose base is just 2 pi, um, and the radius is 1 plus x, and the height is wherever it touches the orange curve.